Hey guys, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about 10 quick hints that you can use to uh, get your trail cams set up. <laughs> oh boy. First of the 10 hints I'm going to give you guys today is your SD cards. Make sure that you have two dedicated SD cards for every single one of your cameras and make sure that you only exchange those two SD cards for that same camera. That way if you have an issue in the long run you can narrow it down to either of the SD cards or the actual camera itself to go ahead and rectify any issues or problems you have with pictures and picture quality. The second hint I'm going to talk to you guys about today is to control lighting. And very simply, it means to make sure that your camera is facing in a northern direction. It doesn't matter whether it's due north, northeast, or northwest, but as long as that camera is facing north, it's going to reduce the amount of times that you get wash out from sunlight, and you're going to end up getting better quality pictures. When you end up facing your camera in a southern direction, you ultimately end up getting times on sunny days in which you get washout, and sometimes it's very difficult to even determine what subject is in the frame. The other thing with controlling lighting is to make sure that you don't set your camera up in areas where there's high contrast of sunlight and shade. Try and set your camera up in an area in which there's consistent lighting, whether or not it's out in a field or whether or not it's underneath the canopy of trees and there's shade most of the time. It's almost impossible to do it, but for the most part, if you can limit the amount of contrast between sunlight and shade, you'll improve the quality of your photos as well. The third hint deals with cable locks. If you're on public land, always make sure that you have cable locks to put out. It's just way too easy for people to walk away with a camera if you just have paracord or a strap on it. It's real easy to get one of the eight packs uh, in Amazon. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link in the description below so that you guys can go ahead and also order cable locks. Uh, and also, if you end up ordering in a large pack, you end up only having one key for all eight of those. Just makes life a lot easier instead of having key after key after key that you're sorting through. The fourth hint I actually learned from other people and watching their YouTube videos, and now that I've done it a couple of times, it makes so much sense. Instead of using the straps, which are about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick, I end up using paracord now. It's much more difficult to be seen from humans walking past, and it's much more difficult for wildlife to see. Uh, I've got a picture here that gives you an idea of two cameras, one with a strap and one with a paracord, and it makes such a difference just by looking at that picture right there and seeing that the strap is much more evident on a tree than the paracord is. The fifth hint that I'm gonna give you guys deals with trying to hide your camera. One of the easiest way to do this is to pick a tree that is larger than the width of the camera itself. The larger the tree, the greater the angle it is that it's gonna be more difficult for wildlife to see that camera sticking out on the tree itself. Multiple stems also help a ton. Sometimes you can hide the side view or side profile of a camera just by having that camera sit in an area of two or three stems together and it kind of hides that camera. Sometimes you don't have a choice though of what tree you choose. There's only one tree, it may not be real huge, it may only be a single stem. So oftentimes if I have to use these trees, I'll go ahead and put some branches down into the paracord and the cable. And sometimes those branches just help hide the side view or profile the camera as well. The sixth hint I'm gonna give you guys is something I learned from some other guys on YouTube. It's an absolutely awesome idea. It's so easy, I wish I would have thought about it. But when it's difficult to really determine as you're angling the camera what the field of view is, if you just simply take your iPhone and you go ahead and hit the selfie mode and you hold your iPhone up against the trail camera at the angle in which it's gonna be taking the picture and you click a simple picture and then look at it, that field of view is gonna be a pretty good approximation approximation of what your trail cam is going to be taking. That way right there in the field you can make any adjustments to the trail cam that you need to. Oh, there it is. 
There's my microphone sneaking down on me again. And that way, if you need to make any adjustments, you can do it right there in the field and not come back a month later and find out that the trail cam view was not adjusted properly and you never got the uh, subjects in the frame that you were trying to shoot. The seventh quick hint is how high to put the camera and how far away to put it. Probably about seven feet is the best height to put the camera. I always put a stick uh, behind the top of it to angle it down a little bit. And I usually try and put the camera about 20 or 25 feet away from the trail or the scrape that I'm shooting. That way it's going to make it more difficult for the deer to see it because it's not at eye level at seven feet high and it's 20 or 25 feet away. So usually it's out of their field of view. Uh, even if I have some older cameras which still have some red flash, uh, I really find out that at 7 feet and 20 or 25 feet away, very rarely do any bucks or does, even mature bucks and does, pick up that trail camera. The eighth hint that I'm going to give you guys relates to putting the trail cam at a 90 degree angle to the trail that you're shooting on. That way you can see whether the deer are moving right to left and left to right. And as long as you put that camera about 20 to 25 feet back, you're not going to miss any subjects. It's going to go ahead and have plenty enough time for that camera to read the subject coming across and getting a picture of it before it goes past the frame. Using your notes in your iPhone is the actual ninth hint I'm going to give you guys. I actually write down all of the modes and all of my setup information into my notes. Uh, probably like you guys, I've got several different cameras I use out there and all of them have slightly different functions for moving through the modes and setups and the actual modes and setups themselves. So if I have this cheat sheet on my phone, just makes it a little bit easier for me when I'm out in the field to make adjustments when needed. The tenth and final hint that I'm going to share with you guys is scent control, scent control, scent control. I usually spray my cameras down at home. I usually carry them out into the field in a backpack that was sprayed or in a plastic bag. And when I get out to put the cameras up, I spray my hands down really good. And once I get the camera up, I spray down the straps, I spray down the cable lock, and I spray down the camera again to try and reduce my scent. I also have a little wipe that I use that was not washed in soap and I use that wipe to go ahead and clean off the lens after I spray it. That way I've got a clearer picture. I'm hoping that these 10 quick hints are gonna help you guys with setup and trail cam placement. I know I just got all my cameras set up here at the end of May, beginning of June, and I'm excited to have those cameras start collecting data to help me make better decisions about where I'm gonna hunt on public land this fall. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hoping you guys liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon. See ya. Well, that was close. As I finished up that video interview, I hopped in my truck. Two minutes later, rain started coming down. Thunderstorm on the way. Time to go home.